This is the last part of designing conventional slab system using direct design method. In this part we will going to cover the detailing section, how we are going to find the reinforcement against the moments which we have calculated in previous parts. This is just a theory part, just go through these one. This slide is basically showing the distribution of loads from slab to adjacent beams. This is the shorter span which is parallel to y axis and the longer span is spanning in x direction. The load which has been distributed from slab to this shorter beam. This is the triangular one. So this will be the load that will be transferred to a shorter beam. And actually this load dispersion is in long direction. The load dispersion in short direction is this one. This is basically the short direction. See this is parallel to this one. So this is the short direction. Load dispersion in short direction and ultimately falling on long beam. This is a long beam. Similarly this is another trapezoidal area which is showing the dispersion of load in short direction and load which is transferring on longer beam. The angle here it is 45 degree. The shear at the exterior face of the first interior support can be calculated using this formula where S is the shortest span and WU is the total factor load which have been previously calculated in the first lecture. The steps we are going to follow are shown in this slide. We have already calculated moments that have been transferred to column strip slabs and middle strip slab through the transverse distribution in previous lectures. Now because we have those moments MU, we will convert these MU into MN by dividing with a flexure coefficient of 0.9. This is a flexure coefficient. This we have already calculated for different column strip and middle strip which are running in equivalent rigid frames A, B, C and D. Once you have calculated the required Mn, the next step is to find M and Rn. All these values in this factor we have, we know this value of Fc dash Fy, so M can be calculated, Rn is equal to Mn over Bd square, Mn we have calculated right now, Bd square, B is the width of slab. Either if you are designing a column strip slab, then you will consider that width. If you are designing a middle strip slab, you will consider the width of the middle strap here. And D is the effective depth. Once you have these two variables, then you are able to calculate the value of a row which is called the reinforcement ratio. And the last step is to find area of steel, which is equal to rho into BD. All these steps will be reiterative because we have different values of MU. But the procedure will remain same that from MU we will going to calculate MN then rho and from rho area of steel and then last step is to find number of bars or spacing. This slide is basically showing the detailing of the slab system using direct design method. This part is for flat slab and this is for flat plate slab or conventional slab beam systems which are not having any kind of drop panels in them. So it is basically explaining that in case of column strips you have to provide top reinforcement and bottom reinforcement and the bottom at least two bars should be continuous and they should go inside this support at least six inch to the center Similarly, if you look at the top bars in the column strip, at least 50% have length of 0 0.30 into ln and the remaining should have a length of 0 0.20 ln. 
like you can curtail them after these lengths. Similarly, in case of middle zip slab, the criteria for bottom reinforcement is that you can lap them, splice them at the support, it should be 50% and the remainder it can be spliced with an offset of maximum 0.15 ln from these supports. However, for the top reinforcement, these can be curtailed at a distance of 0.22 ln from the exterior supports. ACI also requires that once you have calculated the spacing of the reinforcement, that spacing should not exceed two times the slab thickness and also it should satisfy the minimum reinforcement criteria that area of steel minimum should be 0 0.0018 into BH for grade 60 steels and if you are having grade 40 or grade 40, 50 steels then the area of steel minimum should be 0 0.002 into B into HF where HF is basically the slab thickness. Now let us look at the example. Investigate if the preliminary slab thickness 6.5 in 2A with beam design example described in problem 1 is sufficient for resisting flexure in shear. So it says for each of the equivalent frame A, B, C and D, the largest bending moment in the slab occurs at the exterior face of the first interior support in the middle strip slab. For these things, I'm just going to show you the four tables what we have seen. Let's see for A, B and then C and D. This is equivalent rigid frame A and you can see that if we consider the slab design, these are for the slabs. The maximum moment here is 60 and this moment is occurring in middle slip slab instead of column slip slab. Just note down the width of the middle strip which is 10 feet so you can write this moment as 60 by 10. This will be shown in the statement which we have covered. Now coming towards the frame B. Now again see here this is the frame B these are the slabs. So the maximum moment is coming 30 and this moment is again a middle strip slab. So the width of the middle strap here is 5 feet so you're going to write this one as 30 by 5. This will be the moment per unit width of the strip. Now let us see for the C part. This is the rigid frame C, these are the slabs and the maximum moment is coming again here, see in this section. The 79 is the maximum one and where this moment is occurring, it is occurring in middle strip slab. So you will just note down the width of the middle strip slab and you can see it, it is 79 by 15. And for the last part, which is a rigid frame D, again these are the slabs and among these slabs, what is the maximum moment here is irrespective of sign, this is 40, again it is occurring in the middle strip slab, the width of middle strap is 15, so you are going to write as 40 by 15. So all these values which we have seen here, these have been represented in the statement here. From the tables, these moments per unit width of the middle strap is observed to be 60 by 10, 30 by 5, 79, all these we have shown. Now taking the effective depth how you can find this one 
the total slab thickness which we was given in the numerical was 6.5 inches so you will gonna subtract the clear cover and because there are two layers of reinforcement therefore considering number five bars in both directions the value of effective D can be calculated using this formula where 6.5 inch is the given slab thickness and you have subtracted the clear cover and dia of number five bar this is the value of D which we will use in further calculations now calculate Rn Rn is equal to mu over 5 bd square here the term is written as largest Rn for largest Rn you have to consider the maximum value of m so now see here these are the value of m's which we have taken from the table these are the maximum value which we have been taken from the table then out of these four values which one is the maximum this one in rigid frame a so because this is this 60 is in kip fit the 60 was in kip fit so you will multiply 60 with 1000 first in order to convert into pounds and because it was divided with 10 here you can see here it is divided by 10 so this will become 6000 and this moment this 60 was in kip fit so you convert it into pound and in order to further convert into inches you have to multiply it with 12 so 6000 multiplied by 12 divided by 5 is the flexure coefficient B if you take a unit strip this is for a unit strip 1 fit or 12 inches it's a unit strip and d square d is the value which we calculate right now so this is the largest value of Rn 254 considering this largest value of Rn you will going to calculate the value of rho we have this value we have already this value all these factors have been calculated so you can calculate the value of rho which is called the reinforcement ratio this is reinforcement ratio in PRC1 and PRC2 you have studied some tables in which these reinforcement ratios are given against values of FY and FC dash against these values you go to a particular table and check the values of reinforcement so if you go to a table with FC dash as 3000 and FY as 40,000 PSI you're going to observe in that table that 0.375 of row balance the value is coming out to be this one we are checking this at 0.375 because we want the failure to be controlled in tension so because our value the calculated value is far below this 0.375B it means that the failure will be in tension and this is basically the verification of the minimum thickness formula given in the ACI tables. Now this table will be repeated for frame A, B, C and onwards D. So we are just going to discuss one of the frames. We have the total width, the column strip and middle strip width previously calculated for each of the four frames. The first row is showing the value of moments MU. At the five locations these are location one then location two then location three four and five remember this was the longitudinal distribution now because we are calculating this reinforcement for the column strip so we have to take these moments for the column strip I'm just going to show you where we have taken these values this is the frame A and because we are looking at the moments in the column strip slab so this is moments in column strip slab so you have to take these moments in the same way if you are designing the same table for the moments in middle strip slab then you're going to take these moments this will be shown in the next table
So these we have taken from the table. The effective depth we have calculated right now. It will remain the same for all these one. B is the width. Now because we are designing the column strip for the rigid frame A, because the column strip width is 10 feet. So 10 multiply by 12 in order to convert into inches, this will be 120 here. See? This will remain the same for all these one. Then you're going to calculate mu over 5 bd square. For this formula, the value of mu will going to take this one. All the factors will remain the same. 5 b d square, all these factors will remain the same. Only the variable which is changing is mu. Again, you're going to apply the same formula. All the variables remain the same except you're going to replace mu with this value and find this one. So these can be done in Excel by incorporating small formulas there. Once the value of R is calculated, the next step is to find reinforcement ratio. We have already seen the formula. These have been calculated. Again, area of steel can be found by multiplying reinforcement ratio with the width and depth. So the value of B and D is already given. Reinforcement ratio have been calculated. So it can be found easily. After this, there is a check for minimum area steel. This is 0.002 into BH. So the reinforcement, minimum reinforcement is this one. So it's very clear like this is the required reinforcement and this is the minimum reinforcement required. So out of these two values, you're going to select the maximum one. So which is the maximum one? 1.56. Out of this one, which is maximum? 1.92. Out of this one, which is maximum? 2.3. So in these two cases, the required reinforcement is coming ma greater than the re minimum required. So use this one. In case when the required reinforcement is less than the minimum required, you have to provide minimum. Next to is the number of bars required. So now because this is the area of steel that you will want to provide. Now let's see how we can calculate uh, the number of bars. Just select a bar number. You can select from number 3, number 4, number 5 just make sure like don't exceed number three and number four normally in case of conventional slab systems the bar use are number three and number four but once you go to flat slab and flat plate slab then higher number bars can be used if you use the number three bar and you have to provide a steel of 1.56 inch square then the number of bar can be easily calculated by dividing the total required reinforcement 1.56 by area of one bar area of one bar number three bar has an area of 0.11 so divide these two things you're going to get 15 go to a higher number for example if i divide 1.56 by 0.11 the value is coming out to be 14.18 so 14.18 is round off to 15 bars. Similarly, if the area to be provided is 1.923 in square and you have selected bar number 3, so how many bars will be provided here? I'm just going to divide 1.923 with area of 1 bar which have been selected, 0.11. The answer is coming out to be 17.5 so it is round off to 18 bars here the last step is to find the spacing now because you have to provide 15 bars in the column strip which has a width of 10 feet so what will be the spacing the total width is 10 feet you will going to multiply it with 12 in order to convert into inches divided by the number of bars the number of bars you have to provide in this is 15 the answer is coming out to be 18 center to center this one similarly if you have to provide like 22 bars in column strip with a width of 10 feet so again 10 multiplied by 12 divided by how many bars? 
22 bars you have to provide comes out to be approximately 5.45 so you're gonna round off to 5 in center to center just remember that spacing is round off to lower side whereas number of bars is round up you have to round up here you have to round up for the number of bars and you have to round down for spacing so a similar table is being now used for this is again for rigid frame A but instead of now column strip slab you will consider middle strip slab so wherever there is a width B you are going to use the middle strip width in all these calculations the rest will remain same now to check the shear capacity of the slab we have this formula here W is the total factor load acting on the slab S is the shortest span the value of total factor load was previously calculated to be 318 PSF now it is being converted into KSF by dividing by 1000 this S is the shortest span because we have two different span the longer span was 25 feet and the shortest span was 20 feet for the panels so this was calculated here so the value of maximum shear VU is 3.66 you're gonna check the capacity 5 EC which is equal to 5 into 200 root FC dash B W into D FC dash the concrete compressive strength which is given 3000 BW is the unit strip 12 inches because this was calculated in kips so you'll divide by 1000 in order to get in kips you're going to multiply this with a shear coefficient strength reduction factor for shear 0.85 and the overall shear capacity is becoming 5.72 which is again higher than the applied shears so we are safe in other words we can say that the assumed thickness is satisfied from onwards the design of beams will be carried out the slab design has been completed now we're gonna see the beam B1 and B5 it's very clear that the beam B1 here it is having a trapezoidal loading once we do the distribution of loads from slab to beam so the, the load dispersion on on this B1 is coming like this one in a trapezoidal way similarly on the B5 beam which is beam running in shorter direction it is having a triangular load like this one we're gonna see some calculations for this one first just focus on B1 the overall span for B1 is 25 feet you remember the span was 25 feet center to center in the other direction this one this was 20 feet center to center so the beam this is the beam B1 which we are discussing right now it has a span 25 feet the moment shown here 57 and 216 these are the moments at the ends of the beam you remember you have designed the equivalent rigid frame like this one this was the equivalent rigid frame and once you have designed this equivalent rigid frame you have converted the longitudinal moments into transverse distributions and once the transverse distribution was completed you have actually calculated the moments that are going to column step slabs middle step slab and the third was the moments that are going to beam so these values have been taken from those cells I'm just gonna show you so we're gonna go into rigid frame A and we're gonna look at the exterior moments this one is location 1 and this one is location 3 so we're gonna look for location 1 and 3 
in A. This is the rigid frame A. Now because we are designing the beams, so we're going to consider the moments in beam. So this is for the location 1 and this is for the location 3. So the values are here 57 and 216. So these values have been taken from, from those tables. In the same way, if you go for the beam B5, you're going to have these 39 and 141 from the tables. How we arrive these things? Now because this is 45 degree, it's very clear like the beam B1 is subjected to this kind of loading. And the total height here is 20 feet, which is the center to center span here. It means the height here to here is 10 feet because the angle is 45 degrees so if you have a height of 10 feet it means you will going to cover a distance of 10 feet as well means if this height is 10 feet now because the angle is 45 degree definitely this will also going to be 10 feet so 10 from one side 10 from the other side the total span was 25 feet 20 has been covered here the rest of the portion will have a 5 feet this one will be 5 feet how we have calculated the value of 6.36 I actually tell you in first lecture we have calculated the total factored load on the slab and the total factored load WU was coming out to be around 318 PSF PSF means pound per square foot so if you want to have the load in this direction a linear UDL load in this direction so you actually have to multiply this value of PSF with the other direction. So the other direction, this one is 20 feet. So you're going to multiply 318 PSF with 20 feet. 318 multiply by 20. So this will going to come in pounds per feet. Divide this by 1000 as well. So we're going to get 6.36 keep perfect. Now for the size of long beam, you will, you know that because the long beam, the dimensions were 14 cross 28. And this 28 is the depth of the beam including slab thickness. So if you subtract the slab thickness from this one, the stem of the beam will have depth equals to 21.5. So now you're going to calculate first the volume. This is the width 14 multiplied by 21.5, 21.5 because you have subtracted the slab thickness. Multiply with the density, you're going to get pound per feet for the weight of beam. Now you can calculate the maximum negative moments because this this weight of beam will produce a negative moment at the supports so you can calculate it 1 by 10 into factor into the load multiply by clear span square plus 216 is the maximum out of the these two values once you add them, you're going to get 241. This is the maximum negative moment against which you have to check the beam design. These are the same steps. Now instead of BW, we're not going to use the unit strip because we are going to check the design for beam. So you will actually going to use the width of the beam. For MU, this is the maximum moment which we have considered right now. So the row value is coming out to be 0 0.0095 because this value is far less than 0.75 of row balance. The 0.75 of row balance is 0 0.027 and the required reinforcement is 0 0.0095 which is very far below 
So it means you can reduce the size of the beams in order to exceed the value of 0 0.0095 to reach nearby 0 0.027. Now calculating the total factor load on the B1, this is 6.36 into 15, how we have reached this one, I'm just going to tell you. Now this is the B1, so the load on B1 is trapezoidal. So you have to mm, calculate the area and multiply this area with this load. The area of trapezoid because we have two different side, one side is here, the other side of trapezoid is this one. So we're going to take the average. This upper side is 5. The bottom side it's 25. So 5 plus 25, then divided by 2, comes out to be 15. So we're going to multiply this 15 with 6.36 in order to get the total factor load on B1. This is the total factor load in kips on B1. Now calculate the maximum shear in beam. The formula is this one 1.15 1.4 into stem weight span by 2 half of total factor load on beam. This we already have calculated. This is the total factor load on beam. You will divide this by 2 plus Moment difference divided by clear span. So now we're going to check these things for longer beam B1 because the stem weight has been already calculated, span by 2. The total factor load on beam by 2, this is the total factor load which is calculated from here divided by 2. Moment difference because we have moments on each side of this beam. So we have taken the difference bigger, minus, smaller divided by the clear span. The maximum we use coming out to be 60.4 kips. Again supplied loading this is the maximum shear. Now check the shear strength. The formula is this one. 5 EC of shear strength is coming out to be 200 PSI which is equivalent to approximately 3.7 under root FC dash. Now because we are allowed a shear of 6 under root fc dash in beams so it's okay the same calculation performed on the shorter beam side again we have the shear coming into the beam is 40.5 kips and when the strength was calculated it was 185 psi which was 3.4 under root fc dash and far below than the safe values of 6 under root fc dash so it is written here long and short direction should probably be reduced the nominal stresses bn is well below 600 root fc dash at the face of these supports this is the end of this session onward there is an assignment for you and a solved problem just for your practice thank you for watching